guys, welcome back to Food with Flora. Today I'm very happy to have my Japanese friend Ariel coming over to teach us the easiest udon ever. Hi guys, my name is Ariel. I grew up in Japan and today I wanted to show you guys how to make udon. Udon is one of the three popular um, noodle dishes in Japan. Um, one is ramen, uh, which is very popular these days in the US as well. Um, soba and then udon, but udon is the most easiest and also the cheapest noodles to make out of the three, so... Yeah, I love udon the most. Today, the udon recipe that I'll be showing you guys, uh, it only takes 30 minutes from when you start making it and until you start eating it, so it's wow. very quick. Only yeah. 30 minutes? Only wow. 30 minutes. You only need flour, water, and a little bit of salt just for the noodles, so... I bet everyone has that at their home. Uh, you can you can find udon um, usually frozen at Asian markets, um, but I bet the one we make right now will be chewier, tastier, and definitely more flavorful than the one you buy it, and definitely cheaper as well. Okay, let's get started. Today we are making warm udon with chicken and mushroom, and cold udon with egg and green onion. Please feel free to change the toppings or not add any toppings. Believe me, it will still taste great. So today, the recipe that I'll be showing you guys is for about two to three people. So right now, I already um, scaled 200 grams of flour. So I really recommend just having a scale for this. It's 200 grams of flour. All-purpose flour is fine. Um, if you want it chewier, you can use bread flour, but who has bread flour? <laughs> We're using all-purpose flour. And then with 200 grams of flour, it's 110 milliliters of water. So that's roughly a little less than half a cup. And we're gonna pour it in. Any salt, it's gonna be eight grams of salt. And we'll start kneading this. I washed my hands already, so I'm just gonna go for it. Just, um, there are, other techniques, fun techniques to do it. Sometimes people make like a volcano and pour the water in the middle. Just just start kneading it, it's fine. How long do you need to knead it? Um, so if you want it very chewier, um, some people say like knead it as much as you want. Five minutes. Um, I even made this udon when I was really sick um, and didn't have any power and it still turned out great. So honestly when it's smooth and everything is incorporated. That's when you already know. It's not, the recipe that I'll be showing you guys is, it's not rocket science. It is not very sophisticated like pastry as well. So feel free to feel it out. And this is when I start to um, actually go onto a hard working surface. But let me incorporate it a little bit more. This is feeling actually great. I'm gonna switch. I already cleaned this, it's a clean hard surface. I usually just like to put a little bit of flour so the dough doesn't stick. There's no technique, just incorporate as much as you can. I can still feel that the inside of this dough is a little moist. It will take all the flour that's still here. Yeah, you just have to keep kneading it. Um, For a few minutes? Yeah, um, like five or just until when it's smooth. So okay. right now I still there's still a lot of like clumps, mm -hmm. so I'm still gonna need it a little bit more. But I usually get tired around this time and start already cutting. <laughs> <laughs> so the more you need it, the more chewy it gets. Um Yes, because it's more gluten that you're like activating, I guess. But also chewiness comes from how much you boil it. Mm -hmm. You don't really have to put a lot of effort in kneading this. If you have like a KitchenAid, you can also use a KitchenAid as well. Mm. But you can already see that it's definitely a lot smoother. There's no like, what is it called, the window test? It's not, we're not making bread, so we don't have to do that as well. It's just when it's, when you feel like everything's incorporated. Yep, ta-da! We will just let this sit for 15 minutes. This is a smaller dough, so you can cover it all the way through. Okay. It's also a big bowl, so I just didn't want to cover the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Right now we can make toppings. Yes, we will make the toppings. Um, the cold noodle toppings, we just have to cut it, but the warm noodles, we would want to prepare the broth because we were putting chicken as well. So we will we'll start with that. Okay. We wait for the 15 minutes and while we let the dough rest, I wanted to explain a little bit about the, the sauce or the soup. Um, 
So this is called memi, but actually in Jap Japanese we call it menzuyu. Menzuyu. It literally means noodle soup. Um, and a lot of the home else always use this just because it gives a lot of flavor. Um, we even use this not just for noodles, but like we put it on vegetables and to make it a little like salad. Uh, you can find this at any Asian grocery store as menzuyu, or I found this actually at a grocery store and it was the cheapest. So I just got this, it's called memi. Yeah, so this is like the original soup that we would use in Japanese household, but I also found a recipe that does not require this and we can use other ingredients that you might possibly have already if you're familiar with Japanese food. So soy sauce, I'm assuming that a lot of people already have a so soy sauce. Um, and these two, maybe not, but it is most frequently used in Asian or Japanese dish. So hondashi, hondashi. This just gives a lot of flavor. Um, and it's basically bonito soup stock. It sometimes come in like a stick. Um, this comes in in a little bottle. Um, and if you can look inside, it's like a little sesame. Um, it's not sesame. This just gives a lot of flavor without actually using bonito flakes or sometimes we use seaweed to give that like umami flavor. So we use this also to make miso soup as well. It is not a bad investment to have this um, just because you can put it in any soup that you want to just bring out that umami. And this is midi. Mm, Needy. This is a huge bottle. You can find a smaller bottle and this is more frequently seen than mentsuyu. This is also a pretty crucial ingredient in Japanese dish. It's basically sweet cooking wine. This also is used in many, many, if not like 90 to 80% of Japanese dishes. So this is also not a bad investment. These are all things that you will find in any Japanese home. Um, and so we're gonna be doing chicken and mushrooms for our warm udon. And then we will be using scallions and raw egg. We'll take that out later. Um, and we will put the scallions on top just as a topping on the warm noodles as well. But these are basically simple. But also if you don't have any of these, that's totally fine. You can just do noodles and soup. That's, that's the very classic simple udon too. So we'll start cutting this and get ready. We'll start making the warm broth soup now. And I will show you guys how to use all the, these three ingredients to do the warm soup. And we will do this uh, cold soup with the traditional mensuyu. And obviously if you want more onions, you can add more. Uh, we're just starting with three. Okay. Um, and yeah, just do it possibly smaller than that too. Oh, okay. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. But for, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> thinner. Thinner. Thinner is better, I think. Okay. But we're not mincing it. Yeah. Oh, including the white part? Yeah. So let's do all the green. Let's cut some white part as well for like thin pieces. Mm -hmm. But we would like to use a thicker part for the warm broth. Mm. So once you get closer to the root, mm -hmm. you can start cutting it big and possibly even like sideways. Not side. Um. So it's diagonal cut. Okay, do you want to do this? Yeah, sure. Just switched. Flora did a really wonderful job on these green onions. Cute. Uh, these will be toppings. I'm just going to put everything on the side right now. Um, I usually eat the white part as well for toppings. So maybe I'll leave one. For the warm part, we would like to use these white part because it gives the most flavor. If you don't have it, it's fine. So for this one, we will use it for the warm. So I want to cut it like sideways or diagonally, and this can be larger. You could even make the angle a little more to make the surface area larger, just like that. So it's like this. I already feel it in my eyes a little bit. But thicker pieces for the warm broth. If you do thick pieces for the topping, it might just be a little too spicy. So mushrooms, um, again, everything is all up to you. How much onions do you want? How much mushroom? How much vegetables do you want? How much meat you want? But today we'll just do a three just because we are only doing one bowl of warm. So we're just gonna slice this very nicely. Just convenience wise, you can use the bone less, but bone in, you just have to cut it, cut more. But that's yeah. totally okay. Yeah, bone in is cheaper and uh, you can use this. You can use the bone. Exactly. First. Yeah, same. 
Uh, today, for the broth, we will not be using the bones, but yes, Flora is definitely right. The bone does give a lot of flavor. I try to keep it in the freezer Yeah. whenever you need it. Mm. Flora, question. What do you usually do with the skin? If I fry food, I would put the skin in to use the natural oil from mm. the chicken. Okay. Yeah, add more flavor. I never know what to do with the skin. I feel so wasteful, but... Yeah, that's, that's the fattest part. Yeah. Mm. So, how are you cutting this, Flora? I'm cutting it to bigger pieces, just around the bone, so the bone can be removed. After I remove the bone, I will cut the big meat to smaller pieces. Nice. Bite sizes? Yes. So it's been 15 minutes, so we will actually start flattening this out and start actually making our noodles or shaping the noodles. So sprinkle a little on the hard working surface. Um, this is when you really want to use a lot of flour so nothing, so the noodle doesn't stick to each other. Wow, it actually feels really good. I think we need it very nicely. I feel really good about this, this bread. There's a little popping flour and you're gonna just start Flatten this out. We want to roll it into a rectangular shape. Is the round shape okay? Um, I'll show you why the rectangular is important mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay, it's coming along. It's coming along. This side actually is pretty good. This side feels a little too thick, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna extend that a little bit as well. Okay, better. Better, right? Okay, that's actually great. Don't make it paper thin. And this is where you really, really need a lot of flowers because now I'm gonna start folding it. Mm. So it's just the folding is to make the cutting process a little easier. Mm -hmm. So this is why if it's a beautiful rectangular, it's really easy to cut. Okay, and now we will cut this. Okay. Well, I know this is cringe to a lot of people because usually knife and hard surface, not great. That's why in Japan, a lot of like actual udon stores, their surface, hard surface is actually wood. But I'm not putting a lot of pressure, I'm just cutting it barely to, I'm not even touching it, so I'm just gonna go for it right now. So you wanna cut it pretty thin. Um, the size, it's just because it's very, um, it's not straight, it's gonna look odd, but that's the good thing about cutting, making it at home. You get those weird shapes This is why you really need a lot of flour, so nothing sticks to each other. Yeah, so like, this is like a pretty long udon piece. And I will unfold that later. I'm just gonna start cutting everything. You can see kind of this is like, I did a pretty good job yeah. <laughs> in terms of like the width. Uh, you know, pro udon masters will be able to make very evenly cut udon. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, we're not pros, so do your best and just have fun. Okay, so I unraveled everything. It's still there's still a lot of flour, so nothing sticks. You still want to keep it this way because when we boil it, I don't want the noodles to stick while we're both boiling it as well. So from now, we will do simultaneous work. I have two pots here. The bigger pot is to boil the noodles. You want to, I already put a lot of water in it so that the noodles can just move around and dance around in the water. The smaller pot will be doing more work with this because we will be making our warm broth. Okay, so now we will be making the mensuyu from scratch. So not we're not using the actual one that I bought, but from the soy sauce, ondashi, and meeting we will only be making this soup for one person, so I'm only using 50 milliliters of mensuyu. 50 milliliters? I might be putting putting this in an angle. Just put it in. It's already starting to warm up. Um, you don't have to wait until it bubbles. Half a tablespoon of shoyu, soy sauce. One tablespoon of miri. Half a teaspoon or one teaspoon-ish for hondashi for one person. So the dashi already mixed in, it's already pretty warm. So yeah, you don't have to wait until it boils, but just know that it's warm enough. And then I'm gonna add in a cup of just water. The warm broth is now starting to boil. 
So I am going to put our chicken meat. It started to boil again. So I know the chicken's not fully cooked, but I'm gonna put the mushroom. Let this chill for a bit. Maybe I'll go medium heat now. Um, and when the mushroom is soft, I'm gonna put in our thick cut green onions and then we're pretty much done. And now this is, this is great. Um, so I'm gonna put our noodles in. You can just put however you want it and you wanna keep the temperature high mm. so it keeps the boiling point. You don't want it to just sit and stick on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, you can take anything, even a spoon and just you're gonna slowly and gently mix it around. And you're gonna just do this once in a while, we will boil it for 10 minutes. The mushroom is already a little soft. I'm gonna put in our thick cut onions. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes or so. Um, this, we turned the heat off on this a while ago because the chicken looks ready. When the chicken looks ready and when the, like the mushrooms are soft, it is ready to eat. And it smells really great as well. Yeah. I am going to take a bite out of one of the noodles. One of the things that I do want to mention is that after this, we will put it under cold water. When you put it under cold water, the, the noodle gets like tighter and chewier. So when you taste this, don't be mad or you might get upset that, oh, I might have boiled it a little too long. Usually that's, that's it's okay. Just, I'm doing a taste test to see if it's not raw, if I don't taste any like the, of the raw flour. So I'm gonna take a bite out of one of the noodles, preferably like the thicker noodles that you might have. Ooh. When I cut through the noodles with my, with the chopsticks, it already felt a little chewy. It's ready. Okay, it's good. Cool. Everything out. If you want to expedite, you can um, put like um, ice as well, but mm -hmm. it's still quite hot. I'm gonna... So even, I know half of this is gonna go in the warm broth. You still wanna cold, you still wanna put it underneath like cold water mm -hmm. because again, it like by putting the cold water, it does get more chewier and tighter. We have our two bowls, one for cold, one for warm. It looks like about half, wow, that's a lot of noodles. Yeah. I forgot to mention this, but you can also freeze the noodles um, after you cut it. You can just freeze it as it is. You don't even have to uh, unfold it. And when you're ready to eat it next time, you can just boil it as it is. You don't have to thaw it. You can just put the frozen noodles directly in the boiling pot. Just a reminder that you might have to boil it a little bit longer than 10 minutes, about maybe 15 or so, but do the, do the taste test. And we're gonna just pour this in. Wow. Onions on top. And then with the cold noodles. So as you can see, we could possibly have done it a little bit thinner. Um, it does um, expand a little bit. So now I learned my lesson, we can do it a little thicker, but thicker also means more chewiness. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. Usually this is concentrated. So on the back, it will tell you what to part with with water. Um, for this, we're just gonna do a tablespoon um, of the concentrated um, minsu or memi. And then we'll start with half a cup. And if not, we can add more, but I think half a cup actually looks really good. Um, and if you think it's a little too like very salty, you can add more water. If you think it's too watery and not much flavor, you can add more of this. So that is all up to you. You can technically technically just eat it as is right now. Um, but we do have the green onions. If you have like sprinkled seaweed, you can also do that as well. Um, but the traditional way we will do a little egg. Then we will only use the yolk. So hopefully I don't break this. it in the middle yeah so hot noodles with chicken and mushrooms and green on or onions and then cold noodles with eggs and green onions itadakimasu itadakimasu yeah it means like thank you for the food like i'm receiving i'm eating the food mm. okay let's do it so i'm trying the hot one first i'm trying the cold one okay let's do this hopefully it came out good Mmm. 
Pretty good. Mmm. Could be chewier. I think I pulled it a little too long, maybe. Cold and chewy is perfect. Perfect? I think the cold from my camera, but not the fact that it's like we had to wait a little bit. Yeah. And the you know, those got soaked in the house too for a while. But that could be it. The cold one is perfect. I always make this when I'm feeling a little under the weather. Uh, just because it feels there's chicken, there's some protein. Mm -hmm. And in yeah, and in Japanese culture it's not like weird to like make noise when you're like mm. like mm. Yeah. Wow. definitely more chewier. Wow, oh, this is so warm, so mm -hmm. comfy. Mm -hmm. And the chicken is very tender, very soft. Yeah, very yeah. delicious. And there's so many ways to make udon as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you cook the udon and mm -hmm. if you put it with like vegetables and like fry it, mm -hmm. just like in a pan, and if you so instead of like separate if if we put the noodles in the hot soup and let it boil, mm -hmm. it becomes like the 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 noodle becomes a little bit soggier, but it's perfect when you don't want to really like chew a lot. So that's also another way to. Thank you so much, Ayla, for Yay. taking the video with us. Of course, it's a very good recipe. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and Flora, thank you so much for inviting me. This was a lot of fun. I should do it again. Yes, again, I'll come back maybe with a Korean dish because I'm half Korean. Mm. If you would like to watch more of this type of video, please subscribe my channel, give me a like, and leave a comment. Thank you.